Greetings everybody, Radaman here. Thank you for tuning in to Stellaris Overlord, episode 15. Alright, here's another habitat, and we'll put this on Oldara. So we've got two habitats going on right now. New technology discovered. There's a non-aggression bank between the Holy Storm Riderings and Uklap, which is not great. If they're trying to make their relationship warmer, that's bad for me because they're both enemies of mine. I'll get Xenobiology. Alright, light play is all set. Oh, a new archaeological uh, site. The Endless Expanse. I can't annex that because it's nowhere near my territory. Well, that's good to know. Grunge do. And Holy Storm Riders can now try to subjugate me, which is cute. I'll fight you. You know I will. Now, the, the last problem that I had trying to fight uh, the Holy Storm Riders is they had defensive packs with um, other empires, which made it so that when I fought them, I had to fight a whole bunch of people. But it looks like they don't have any defensive packs anymore. Uh, so they might be a good target once you guys decide that building tall is done and that I can retool towards, um, towards combat. System charted. Where are my gases? New technology discovered. Ooh, ZPM, or ZPR in this case, sorry. Stargate is leaking. I think I'm going to actually get uh, Artisan Output to continue to resolve the consumer good um, shortage that I have. I would like to... All right, there's the exotic gas refinery. I don't know why it wasn't showing it to me earlier. So here at Morpheus and... Uh, or no, at uh, Light Play. Let's get an exotic gas refinery. There it is. Uh, what I'm hoping to do is replace the Autocathonic Monument with a research institute at Yoda Prime to try to, again, raise our research rate up a bit because it is embarrassingly behind um, compared to the galaxy average. Okay, there's far more jobs than there are. I'm actually going to demolish this district, this trade district. There's too many jobs on Engelos, and it's uh, it's causing my empire size to just sprawl for no reason. So my two construction ships are 50% and 20% done with the new Habs. This game can fulfill the dream of many people under arachno-communism. Yeah, or whatever other system of government that you want to impose on others. So of these three, Edict's Fund goes up, Ruler Cap goes up. Uh, I probably want to work towards uh, Privy Council, so I'm going to go with Governor Level Cap and uh, Monthly Influence. Because extra housing doesn't really help me immediately. My, um, my systems are not nice and full yet. What I really need is jump drives so that I can resolve the uh, Gowl quest line. 
But unless this Fallen Empire opens their borders to me, that's not going to happen until I get jump drives. But obviously, I'm not going to get jump drive. Or they're not going to open their borders to me. They're going to be going to be locked and remain locked because uh, they hate me and will never like me. Receiving transmission. New technology discovered. Artisan output gone up. Still hasn't resolved the super good lack, but uh, you know we'll work on it. New technology discovered. All right, something fast. More research alternatives, and this was xenobiology. So it is giving me the precursor to genetic evolution. Uh, there's three main ways to ascend your species. There is psionics, there is genetics, and then there is cybernetics. Um, how do we improve our species? Genetics or cybernetics, I'm not even going to consider uh, psionics, because we are materialistic. So there you go. There's that poll. Um, and that sort of, that sort of, um, lets me know whether I go more towards gene tailoring or not. I think anyway, I'm going to get this because it does give me gene mod points. So what this works is when you have some gene mod points over here, so clicking the species tab, you can modify your gene mod points to remove negative traits or to add positive ones. So the pros and cons, sure. Uh, going genetics allows you to change your species to remove negatives and add positives. And if you specialize in it through, um, if you specialize in it through ascension perks, which is here, uh, let me show you engineering evolution and engineering mastery or evolutionary master mastery. It allows you to significantly make your species better at however you want to make them better at make them smarter, make them stronger, etc. cetera. Uh, alternatively, you can go cybernetics to basically do the same thing, but become a robot. Um, so one is you are, I guess it's kind of like eugenics, but ba ba you're modifying your own genome to become stronger bi biologically. And the other is you're modifying your species to become more cybernetic to become stronger through robotics. They're relatively equivalent to one another. Um, and then the the third option is mito over matter, which is you become psionic, but uh, because of our... Psionics are, are generally spiritual, uh, the path of spiritualists, and we're materialists. So as a materialist, you usually would go cybernetics, but genetics is sometimes more of an easier fit. So there is a, there is basically no drawback from going to genetics because it's just sort of the de facto way to improve your species. And there are some drawbacks going cybernetics because if you become a robot, um, your empire stops relying on food, more relies on energy, and then you can trigger some other sort of nasty negative side effects like the... I won't get into it because it spoils some stuff, but, but yeah. Okay, uh, I am in the council. Oh, no, we are electing the council right now. Swank. So if we take a look at the uh, galactic community, I'm easily in the, I'm the top. So I'll be on the council. Nice. And it looks like, uh, it looks like you guys are leaning towards genetics, so... I'm happy that I picked the gene modification points. Right, how is the 70%, 39%? System charted. This scientist no longer has anything to do. Have him go over here, try to figure something out. The Salemi uh, Citizen Commonwealth is huge, I gotta say. 
Oh, and they have some border guard with the ground shoe. Um, hmm. Actually, Mr. Scientist, go this way. I'm gonna have you jump over the ground shoe and check out this uh, southwest corner that I have no information on. Harmon Snow, thank you for the reset, by the way. And welcome. Alright. I'm gonna be on the council with the Garanchu and the Bavir in seven days. Three, two, one. Done. Wow. That lead that timing. My leader died the moment I joined the council. Assassination. It wasn't, technically. Uh Joint, you're gonna become the chief scientist for biological research. And let's see if I need to replace uh, replace you at Sylvanti. So Sylvanti is actually making some science. So yes, I do need to replace you. Which means we're going to get another science leader. I'd like one that like could fill in for someone. So ideally, uh, mani uh, Maniacal is fine. And, oops, uh, I double clicked that Petrobol. You are going to be this maniacal scientist. Formation of the council. Now we can get things done. So let me show you what that means. As a council member, here is the Galactic Council. Uh, elections happen periodically, depending on diplomatic weight. And then... Some of the things that the council can do, if you scroll down here, um, we can enact special reforms or something uh, to be able to focus on dangerous events and or claiming someone is like undermining the galaxy or something like that. Um, you can also give yourself, the council can put up to a vote whether they get veto power and whether they get, um, you know, those kind of things or to be able to shove things to the front of the line. So here's something called emergency measure. Emergency measure as a council member allows me to move it from pending the proposal queue uh, to the floor of the Senate and get it voted on immediately. And then that's a, that's something that, that can be a powerful tool for you to to control galactic politics if you see fit. So here is Crisis Declaration. So if there was a an empire in the galaxy that was threatening everybody else, we could declare them the crisis, uh, what the rules of war are. And, you know, there's all these little... Um, these little measures that we can change so regulated growth for instance is a pending resolution and if that passes I can propose regulated growth so that my subjects become more loyal to me and then voice for all even more so so it's pretty powerful tools if you end up joining the council I could also uh, vote to relocate the galactic market because it wasn't uh, wasn't located on my home planet and I was bummed about that because I spent a lot of uh, influence trying to do that but uh, it didn't work new technology discovered alright research alternatives are done let's go with advanced combat rolls I think alright now the Two new habitats are getting close to being done, so let's roll out some colony ships. Consumer goods are going to be out soon. I'm just going to buy a bulk amount of it so it doesn't become a situation. I'm still working on that. I'll, I know it doesn't seem like it, but I am moving resources around and working towards being able to manufacture more. So that's civilian fabricators. Over in factions, I'm still dull edge. I'm I'm really surprised because if you take a look at like um, my equivalent uh, tech level, Garanshu is equivalent. Stormrider is superior, but they started ahead of me because they were an overlord. 
And Bavir is equivalent, so I don't really see myself falling behind. I don't know. I don't know. Um, should I keep building habitats? Or should I gear up a fleet? It is up to you. Put five minutes on that clock. New technology discovered. Battleships are done. I will give you like a um, a few minute warning about the name of the primary class of a battleship. So if you want battleships named after you, uh, just make sure to type something. All right, I'm going to get carry operations just because it's cheap and quick. So here is our battleship. We don't have good weapons for the battleship or good armor or sections or anything like that. So they're very basic for now. Uh, but as we unlock additional technology, we will have pretty powerful battleships. I think. So if we gear up a fleet, um, there's various things that we could do. We could try to clear the Marauders or we could try to free the Stormrider Incorporated out from being a vassal out of the uh, Holy Stormrider and Empire. Um, taking them down a notch and uh, gaining on yet yeah, another vassal. Hey, Joe Rambo, thank you for the follow. And welcome. And I'll be doing the, the battleship raffle in like just a minute or two. Trodinus. You need housing and jobs. Oh, there's a habitat complete. Colonize. And then the third habitat is here. And the uh, the habitat will be raffled as well. Establishing colony. So this new colony, this is for the colony, it's going to be named Gusius. Congrats, Gusius. All right, and then the battleship is going to be named Venerable. I'm not going to build any of them just yet. I'm going to wait for this poll to resolve. What kind of battleships do I plan to make? Um, it really depends on the kind of weapon tech that I have unlocked. I think for now, they're going to be jack of all trade type battleships. But eventually... Really? You closed your borders to me? But you pledged secret loyalty to me. Good God, why? Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. New technology discovered. Alright, what are we gonna get next? I'm going to get ground defense planning. It's relatively worthless unless you're in a defensive war, but it researches very fast. I'm just trying my very best to try to get rid of Doll Edge. I have a, a deep-seated feeling like I shouldn't be Doll Edge. Because I've been discovering technologies rapid. Ooh, yes. Okay, so I know what kind of battleships we're going to make now. Because I just got offered kinetic battery. So, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Kinetic battery. Kinetic battery is um, one of the strongest long-range ballistic weapons in the game. FYI. This is... 77% done. How are my current vassals feeling towards me? Loyal? Loyal, but neutral relation. 
Uh, what about uh, what about you guys? Loyal and improving. Not bad. Not bad at all. Okay, you officially have voted for fleet. Uh, what what military actions are we going to take? Attack our old overlord. Attack the marauders. Um, what else is there? Hmm. I'm trying to think of what, um, annex a new independent empire. I don't think we're quite ready to go against the Prosnakin and Garanchu, so I'm not going to have that as an option, because I think it would be pretty challenging. And we'd likely lose because they have superior navy. I have them working on my navy. That's why it's better. Uh, so, yeah, you pick two and a half minutes. We'll vote on what we're doing with a improved navy. And then with this improved navy, let's go ahead and get a battleship design together. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for me to get kinetic batteries before I roll the new battleships out. Get uh, advanced combat rolls, kinetic batteries, and we're going to have pretty powerful battleships. So I'll be slowly working on it. But uh, I don't want to make inferior ships now and then just have to pay money to retool them later. That doesn't make any sense. New technology discovered. Well, the consumer goods are now in the positive, which is great. Right, you managed to jump. Who is an independent empire as an example? Sure, let's take a look. So... Let's see. We have the Holy Storm Rider ends would be independent, but they're my ex um, overlord. Huntak Galactic Hierarchy here is an independent empire. I could actually just propose. Well, okay. So they don't want to be my subject, so they would be a really good target for it, uh, provided that I have um, physical access to their um, to their borders. I'd have to check on that. Uh, the Han Falir are independents up here. I think they're currently in a war right now, so I can't subjugate them. Oh no, I could uh, try to make them a tribute. So yeah, they're independent. And that might be about it. There's not a whole lot of independents around me, but they do exist. Most are um, either overlords or tributes. Uklap is technically independent, but they're an overlord. So it looks like we're going to be attacking Marauders. Got it. Gear up the fleet to clear out Marauders. All right. That is a big long-term goal. Now, one big issue that I'm having right now is my minerals are just neutral. Uh, I That's not a good position to be in. So I need to start um, ramping up my mining New efforts. New technology discovered. Advanced combat rolls got done. Let's go with... Oh, man. There's some really good options. Positronic AI. It's going to take a while, but added research speed is kind of nice. Alright, fleet. Retool again. Add those combat computers. We have conquered another world. And that is a signal for the third habitat. Uh, where? Here? No. 
What, what is going on here? Holy ship. Uh, where is the indicator for it? This is really strange. I don't know why I can't Fleet colonize it. Applied. Where did it go? Oh, well, whatever. I, I think it wasn't finished, but then it... Oh! No, that's my fault. I mixed up the Gusius's colony being finished with the habitat being done. I'm just going to save the alloys, though, um, so that uh, I can roll into the fleet better. All right, so Gusius is a reactor district. Uh, that's what its specialty is. And I will, as soon as I have the energy credits, build reactors. So I, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build two reactor districts here. And then as soon as they're done on light play, I'm going to replace the generator districts with mining districts so that my minerals aren't so close to zero. Uh, the only reason I did these energy districts is for the energy infrastructure um, promise that uh, first speaker glitch made. So my rare crystals are in the negative, but not by much. My exotic gases are actually real up. So I'm going to replace this here discovered. with exotic or er, rare crystals, I think. Once or All right. We researched hyperdetent form. And I am going to get next uh, wildlife removal. With the spare energy credits I have, I'm going to start clearing terrain blockers that I have. Basically don't have any. Wait, why do I have any wildlife to be removed? Because then... Oh yeah, I know I have one that opens up two districts for Seventy. So that's that's worth it, I suppose. Okay, bring the speed up to fast now, because I'm just sort of waiting for technology to finish up so I can have a bigger fleet. System surveyed. Again, I have no idea why they haven't added Josk Fullmat to their empire. They're just behaving very strangely. They can't colonize it because it's uh, Holy World, but they could get the system, and there's no good reason for them not to do that. They're just being weird. Alright, Gusius did build both reactors, so at light play, I'm going to replace these with mining, and then also get a min mineral purification plant, so that I get more minerals from mining jobs. Trying to ramp our uh, minerals up. One of the issues when you grow tall and not wide, growing wide usually gives you a lot of systems that have minerals that you can exploit. Growing tall means that you generally need a lot of minerals. Holy cow. That is a lot of gifted subs. I have no idea who did that, but cheers to you. Thank you. That's, uh... That's like every remaining viewer <laughs> that didn't have a sub. Engaged. Holy moly. Oh, what's happening? Did I just lose my research vessel? Oh, there's a mining core at Josk Fulmet. Rude! 
All right, you um, go here and jump to Chrome. Not every viewer, no, not every, but but pretty amazing. New tradition. We'll go with Imperious Architecture for more housing. New technology discovered. And Tangier, thank you for the resub as well. All right, dangerous wildlife removal is done. I'm going to get Heritage Site. Jump you out of there to Chrome. More Hydrate and Posture Check. All right, uh, Selamy Citizen Commonwealth is becoming xenophilic. I don't know what they wear, but xenophilia works for me because they'll like me more. Right, dude? Here, peanuts for Yoda. And I am four months out from having kinetic battery. And then we'll design a battleship to use those kinetic batteries and try to purge as much of this. I'll probably be able to get Kursek and Ivatrip. But uh, their capital at uh, Zeb Potok is way well defended, so I'm going to have to get a pretty large fleet to take them on. That's not going to be easy. All right, taking a look at the energy infrastructure. Ooh, District's 3 out of 2. So I can turn... Oh, no, it's already doing it. So now it'll be 2 out of 2 now. Yep, 4 out of 2. Okay, I don't know what's going on, but whatever. They don't know how to count. New Pro probably, technology probably discovered. Connect battery is done. Uh, next up, we will go for... Alloy Mega Forge, so I can get more alloys. And let's design the battleship. So this battleship, the Benrival, is uh, just going to be a artillery ship. Pure artillery. And then, once they get close, I guess I can laser them a bit. So the kinetic battery has a range of 120. Uh, to put this in reference here, let me just save... Nope, oh, nope. That was supposed to be the Benrifle. What the heck is going on? Okay, this is not done. I just wanted to make a reference. So, for reference... Uh, the large uh, advanced railguns have a range of 100. These lasers have a range of like 60. So it's pretty long range. Give it some um, shields and armor. Regenerating hull. And afterburner. That is the Benrifle for now. All right, Benrifle. One, two, three, four of them. No, I decided not to go Citadel, because Citadel doesn't immediately have a benefit. Um, yeah, Citadel doesn't immediately have a benefit. It will encourage um, Titans to be unlocked, but not immediately. Due to their lack of advances, or due to their advances in technology, uh, Level Core is now a vassal. So these guys uh, are no longer protectorate, they're a vassal. And that means that I can negotiate their agreement and make them a scholarium. Uh, they're done. Are you guys at war? Yeah, you're still at war. Okay, es except. Cool. There are empires de preparing to declare war on us. The Holy Storm Raterians are preparing to declare war on us. Uh, so I might not be fighting the Marauders in a minute. I might be fighting the Holy Storm Raterians. But Lava Corps has just become our Scholarium. Which means that they are adding to our physics research. Uh, well, all research. But yeah. Cool. Very cool. Uh, they're probably not that helpful because their technology... Uh, level is inferior to us, but at least they're trying to help to uh, catch us up so that we lose Doll Edge. Which is crazy that I'm still Doll Edged. I feel like I've 
um, paid a whole lot of attention to that, but somehow we're still behind. How? I do not New know. New technology discovered. All right, Harris site's done. Habitability would be kind of nice to have, and that's a quick one. Yeah. Habitability is always nice because it allows for the maximum happiness and stability of the planets that I have to go up, especially given that we're non-adaptive. Speaking of non-adaptive, uh, we do have a free trait point where I could remove sedentary, but I'm not really worried about sedentary. I don't rely heavily on uh, immigration and resettlement cost, so I'm going to save up until I get non-adaptive removed. Would hiring a Merc fleet be a good idea for an upcoming war? Uh, possibly, but um, our navy is strong enough to take them on, I think, especially given that we have now battleships coming out. I could um, hire, let's see, neither of them are um, being hired out for uh, combat fleets, like a Merc fleet, so that is a, a bit of a non-starter there. Let me talk to the Salvager Enclave. I could take on reclaimed ships for energy credits instead of um, alloys, but they might suck. So, yeah. There's no one to really hire, but I'm not. I'm not that worried about um, them declaring war on me. I'll build up my fleet. They basically, uh, they could attack Highland Timber or Gooseus initially. So what I could do is I could start gearing up my choke points to be more protected. Well, actually, they might not be able to get to Highland Timber. Uh, let me check. Cross Nacken, closed border to... No. They could go through Prosnacken's territory. I'm not sure they're likely to do that. They're more likely to come this way. But who knows? New technology discovered. All right, Alloy Mega Forges, mine. We do have a bit of an issue with minerals and consumer goods, so mining station output would be kind of nice. And then the United Wash Patuck State opened up their borders to me. I don't know why, but I will, uh, which is super strange because I'm rivaling them. I'm going to end my rivalry with them. I don't know what's going on, but, um, I'll put an embassy there. I'm not really interested in being um, allied with them because they're uh, authoritarian xenophobes, but um, if I'm about to head into a war, I might as well have fewer enemies than allies. So, sure. Strange bedfellows. So the Holy Storm Riderians, I am going to put a spy network there from someone that was representing me in the galactic community so that I can just figure out what's going on Ryan Empire is becoming Xenophilic. Transmission. Cool. And they also, as they are becoming Xenophiles, want a peace non-aggression pact with me? Sure. I guess I'll vote on that. Wow. They would almost agree to be a subject of mine. They would agree if I agreed to go to war for them for all their wars. They, well, I'm not going to sign on to that because that's pretty terrible. You know what? If I say... Hold on. If I say they're a vassal where integration is prohibited, they have restricted voting, they are permitted to expand, no contributions one way or another... 
Uh, they don't have to defend me, but I will defend them. I get a holding and I offer sensors. They would agree to that. Why not? <laughs> Yellow is now my holdings. Them be some moves, man. Them be some moves. So the Rand Empire and the Selomi Citizen Commonwealth are now both subjects of me. Tarmarin, thank you for uh, for the resub. And thank you for the congratulations. There we go. Overlord me. Now, one of the problems of me uh, adding a bunch of people to my overlord is, like, my monthly influence is now in the, in the poop shoot. I'm essentially not making any influence at all. So, I got to find uh, someone to... Rival. And there really isn't a good choice here. People who are pathetic to you aren't good rivals because, well, you can't rival them. I'm already rivaling Garanchu and Holy Storm Rider in. I guess I could rival Prosnakin? Uh, yeah, I guess I'll... No, don't declare war. That's not what I meant to claim. I will harm relations with you and rival you. All right, so now I'm up to three rivals again. I'm giving me a little bit of influence. There it is. Plus 1.18 per month. That's pretty pathetic, but I'm not using a whole lot of influence right now, so, like, it's fine. Hashimoto, thank you for the resub as well. Yeah, I am a dad now. I am indeed. Prosnaki closed their borders to me, and Huntak broke their commercial pack off with Ryan, and Ryan broke their commercial pack with Bavir. I think probably because they're um, they're gearing towards uh, better relation with me or something. I'm not really sure. The Ryan are very disloyal, but it is improving a lot per month. They have a belligerent stance, so that's not going to really help um, relation with them. But they're honor-bound warriors that are xenophilic and militarist, and that's totally fine by me. Their uh, their ethos well aligns. All right, Morpheus, you need uh, you need some work here. I think Morpheus replace with a industrial district. Cool. Both yours is in college. You missed them a ton? I can't imagine. I cannot imagine. Someday I'll get there. And I'll probably be in the same shoes as you, but that's going to be uh, many years from now. Unless I have some sort of genius kid that goes to college, you know, at a like a ripe old age of like a few years. Not that I expect that to be the case. Genius don't run in my blood. Oh man. The Mystic Order. Uh, do I want a caravan cruiser? I do not. No. So my battleships have been rolling off the line. Uh, here comes one, two, and let's try to get a third here as well. Sell off some resources. Buy some alloys. So I'll have six battleships. I need 68 more alloys. 50. Come on, we can do it. 60. Okay, there it is. That's enough. So three more battleships. So six battleships. Um, eight cruisers. Nine... Destroyers and 12 Corvettes. And Lava Corps is now officially a Scholarium. Nice. They have converted over. And I think, yep, subject taxes has gone up. So my research, my total research has gone up. Still dull. Rad is a doll boy. But I am working very, very hard on remedying that. My intel is falling on the Prosnagan. Uh, I will spy on you.
Uh oh, the Panaxala just vanquished some Leviathan. Wow. It must have been an easy Leviathan New because um, discovered. I am. Well, let's take a look. Their fleet power is pathetic. And. Yeah. So, yeah, it must have been someone simple. Deep core mining. More minerals for miners. I'm trying to, to fix my mining problems. New technology discovered. Habitability gone up. Climate restoration allows us to terraform uh, tomb worlds. Do I have any tomb worlds nearby? I don't believe I do. Oh, no, that's not true. Um, Fainor. Fainor Prime is a tomb world. That wouldn't be terrible to have. Weighed against the other options here. Additional resources for jobs would not be bad, but yeah, I'm going to go Climate Restoration. I would like to bring that Tomb World at Feanor into the fold. That would be very useful. That was the capital world of the Eradicators that I couldn't colonize because I didn't have the tech. New technology discovered. All right, and Positronic AI got done. Energy Nexus for more energy wouldn't be terrible. More hydrates. I'll always take more coffee. God knows I am going to need it. District mandates fulfilled. Of course it was. What's my next mandate? Minor mandate. Mining stations built. Now, that's a little bit more annoying to do because I am not expanding, so... I'm going to game the system and destroy some of my mining stations and just build them back. I think that still works. I tested that recently. Uh, patron of the Arts? I sure would like to be. The Unity. That bankrupted me, but hey, whatever. It's worth it. So the Storm Rider Inns are now equivalent in fleet power, and that's without even accounting the three new battleships that I'm about to roll out. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. There we go. Don't roll into the Marauders, because that would blow you up. Whoa! And that is a perfect 110 fleet size. So that's my maximum um, fleet capacity. Doesn't get any bigger, and I have a 19k fleet. My fleet would be a little bit bigger if I passed some of the temporary edicts of, like, shield boost and reactive armor and the like. Um, so, question. Should I preemptively attack the Holy Storm Rider? If no... Uh, what I would do is I would try to use this fleet to purge some of the Marauders instead. The idea is to have a big enough fleet that you don't suffer a lot of losses when you go against the enemy. So you don't have to replace a lot of ships, making it a lot less, a lot more inexpensive to, um, you know, to wield your, your military might. Uh, I'm not entirely sure that Task Force Sir Arthur Gaia is ready to go against the Marauders, but... I'm, I'm close to being ready, I suppose. Uh, alternatively, what I could do is I could go against the Holy Storm Rider, and we tried this before, but uh, I don't believe that they have any defensive packs. So the issue that they had before is that when I declared war on them, a bunch of people came to their aid, and I wasn't really able to dominate them, even though I was uh, totally punching them into the mud. There was also the issue of um, uh, hyperlane problems, so... Uh, coming to their defense was some of the empires over here, but I physically couldn't even get to them because of the hyperlane path gore that I had going on. But now, if I... Let's see. If I go against the Holy Storm Rider and I only really need to conquer the green stuff here. So some of this green stuff I really can't get to because the Prosnakin has their borders closed to me and I just cleared them arrival, so that's not likely to change anytime soon. And it looks like I'd have to jump through some of these freebooters to get there. 
but um, I might be able to dominate them. And if I can't, another thing I could do is to make claims on their home systems. Um, and just do a claim war where I take over this pocket, which is their home world. So, yeah. All right, back, New technology back to normal discovered. Climate. Deep core mining is done. More mineral purification. Yeah, my minerals are now bouncing back from zero. Yeah, give you one more minute to vote on that, but it looks like yes will be the answer. Thank you for tuning in to Stellaris Overlord, which originally streamed live on Twitch June 14th. If you have any feedback or questions for me, let me know in the comments below. If you would like to catch a live stream of mine, Rodamont.com has my stream schedule and countdown timers to upcoming streams. If you would like to join my gaming community, Rodamont.com or the description of this video have a link to Discord. Thank you so very much for watching. A special thank you to my Patreon patrons, Twitch subscribers, and viewers like you that support the channel. I'll catch you in next episode or an upcoming stream. Farewell, my fellow Stellaris Overlordians, or something like that.